We are very lucky and happy to have Kim here. Kim is going to walk us through um, a slideshow and then we'll be able to get together and work on the project today. But first, a little housekeeping. If there's any questions, uh, the chat box is open. You can chat with everyone. You just wanna click that blue button. Uh, you can specifically chat with one person. If you select their name, you can do all of the hosts and panelists or you can just chat with everyone. The Q&A box is also open if you have any questions during this webinar. Kim can help through that. If there's any sort of technical issues, uh, Frankie, Bianca, or myself can help you with those, and we will work on that privately on the side. And captions are available. You just have to enable them from the button on the menu that says show captions. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Kim. Kim, thanks again so much for being here. Thank you, Erin, for that nice introduction. I'm so happy to be here this afternoon with everyone. Um, I have a really interesting um, art therapy project for us to do together. And um, for those that we haven't been together before, I usually start the workshops with a little PowerPoint that I share, it takes a few minutes and it, walks through the steps of what we're going to do this afternoon together, just so you feel comfortable and familiar um, with the with the project. So I'm going to share my screen with everyone now. And I hope everyone can see this well enough. Um, so we're doing something today called yarn painting. And it actually involves no paint at all, um, but it, it is using yarn and glue. And it's a very sensory experience um, and it creates very vibrant colors of art. Just to tell you a little um, explanation of what art therapy is. The American Art Therapy Association defines art therapy as an integrative mental health and human services profession that enriches the lives of individuals, families, and community through active art making, creative process, applied psychology theory, and human experience with a psychotherapeutic relationship. And what all those words mean is that when you, um, as a, a client, sit down with an art therapist, and you talk about your worries or concerns, art is always part of your sessions. And through the art and discussing the artwork and the emotions and feelings that come up while you're creating art um, is such a big and important part of uh, what an art therapist and a client does together. We save time at the end to talk about the art and about your experience. Um, and, and today at the end, I will leave time for anyone to put anything they'd like in the chat box, if they have any questions, um, if any really strong feelings came up, you can let me know and I'd be happy to talk and um, chat with you about that. How we're gonna be using the workshop today is we're gonna, going to be using art materials that provide a very sensory experience. So what I mean, um, when I say sensory, there are things that have a texture or a feeling to it. So yarn um, is one of the materials and it's very soft in our hands and it brings up just like a blanket would, just that feeling in our hands brings up um, for some sense of comfort, relaxation. So yarn is one of the things we're gonna be using. And the other is glue. And glue for many people have the opposite sensory or feeling experience because it could be messy and it could be sticky. Um, and often people are frustrated with glue. So we're gonna be using these two different feelings like that comfortable feeling and that frustrating feeling with the art materials together um, and to see how people manage it and how they, um, create art and cope with uh, the materials that they're working with. So I want you to pay attention to those feelings that come up when you're using those two materials together. So you may be curious about what yarn painting is. 
Um, yarn painting is making a picture using yarn and glue. Two materials, um, fairly simple. And there's also um, a template that we'll be using today um, that has a design of some type of picture, either uh, a sun or a butterfly. There may be a flower in the template. And we can use those uh, template drawings as a guide for when we put down our yarn and glue. Um, yarn painting was created uh, by an artist, a uh, Mexican artist. Um, and it's become a traditional form of Mexican art. Here are some of the supplies that um, we will be using today. Some glue, liquid glue. Now it could be any kind of uh, Elmer's glue, uh, white glue, clear glue. Um, if you have colored glue, it's, it, it's all good. Um, a paintbrush, and that's just to, um, move the yarn and glue around. So you don't, if you don't like touching it with your fingers, you can use the uh, tip of the paintbrush and I'll demonstrate how to do that. A piece of cardboard, and that could be from anything. It could be from a box that was delivered to your house. Um, you can cut up a piece of cardboard. It doesn't have to be um, a, a perfect shape of cardboard either. It's really to hold, uh, give the art some stability and hold uh, hold it in place while you are um, putting the yarn and glue down. Some masking tape to hold down the cardboard. Um, a toothpick if you have it, that's just a smaller thing to move around the yarn, but the paintbrush is absolutely fine. Um, a paper towel in case you spill anything and you need it for your hands. Also a cup of water in case you need it for your hands. Um, and a pair of scissors. Uh, the yarn, any yarn, scrap yarn, any colors that you have um, will work. The idea is to make it very colorful and very vibrant. Um, and you will be surprised how amazing these come out um, and the templates uh, that should be part of your packet. Here's uh, just an example of what yarn painting can look like. This is an example on the left of someone uh, starting a yarn painting on a piece of cardboard. And then in the middle one is a, as they got further along. And then all the way to the right, you'll see a, a finished picture of yarn painting. This is a step-by-step -step and it just talks about um, sensory textured art making. Again, that just means using different materials that feel different in your hand and bring up different emotions for you while you're touching them and using them. Um, I'm not gonna go through the step-by-step -step right now because we will be, I'll be demonstrating it. Um, and you can, I'll be lowering the screen so you can see my art and then you can follow along if you wish. Um, but I will do it slowly and I will do it step by step. So if there's any uh, anything that comes up for you, please let me know. Uh, here's just a few more examples of the one in the middle is an abstract um, using very vibrant multicolor yarn. There's a fish. Someone uh, created like an underwater scene and all the way to the right, um, a vase with flowers. And the, the one on the right's a little bit looser. So everyone's style is a little bit different. And that's really the beauty of art therapy. It's about, um, not about what the finished piece looks like so much. There's no judgment on it. It's really about all the emotions that come up for you while you're creating art and what that does for you. And just the very last slide, that's just me. And um, I am going to be stopping share right now and getting back to you. So um, again, I'm gonna be lowering my screen. You'll see the materials that I'm using in front of me. If you need a moment to gather your own materials, please uh, take some time. And I will be going through this demonstration um, slowly. I'll put some 
background music on so you can uh, relax and hear something soothing. I'm just going to check the chat before I start to see if there is any questions. Oh, someone asked if I have a an example of the template. Um, I have this template that looks like a sun. And then in the packet, there should be one that looks like a butterfly. Um, I believe there's also another that looks like a flower. And if you don't have the template, um, that's fine. I can demonstrate for you how to uh, draw a very, uh, like a, a simple shape with lines that you can follow along. Okay, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna lower my screen. So just to review, this is a piece of cardboard that I'm just gonna tack it down on, uh, on my board here just to hold it in place while I'm working. If you have a little piece of tape, the cardboard is not a requirement for the piece, but it does help keep um, the piece of paper, the template, uh, nice and sturdy. Um, for anyone that asks and are curious about um, what it could look like as you're making it, here's one that was started um, at a different time I was working on, and this is the butterfly one. And it's incomplete. I still have to do the other wing, um, but I chose these colors um, and I started in the middle and I worked, or I'm sorry, I started on the outer edge and I worked in towards the middle. And I will demonstrate that for you on this template today. Um, and here's one more small one. Um, these are some flowers that were drawn freehand without a template. And you're always welcome to draw something freehand. If you don't like the images in the template, you can do your own design and um, and weave the yarn um, like it was done here in these uh, flower petals. So once you have your cardboard down and it's secure, if you're going to use cardboard, um, you will take your sun, I'm using a sun image, and also just use a little piece of paper um, to tape it down. Now, I just want to demonstrate for those maybe that don't have the template, um, I am going to draw with you a really simple um, design that you can use on a, just a white piece of paper. I'm going to grab a white piece of paper as we talk. So grab a white piece of paper. This is for people that do not have a template um, and would like to create something today. So once you have your white paper, just tape something down just tape it in place just to hold it. Um, and then you can grab, um, if you have a marker or if you're more comfortable with a pencil, uh, whatever you wish to work with, I'm gonna use marker to demonstrate just so you can um, see the lines a little bit better. And I'm gonna base it off of this template that I already have um, printed. So I'm gonna start in the middle with just a simple circle, just like that. And again, for art therapy, don't worry about being perfect. Um, do the circle freehand, do it as however it comes out. Just feel comfortable just doing a little circle in the middle. And then for the rays of the sun, Think of it as just doing triangles um, all the way around and just 
So up and down, triangle shapes. You cannot um, do this wrong. Um, the yarn is going to cover up the outline. So anything that you wish to create uh, correct about the lines, you can once you put the yarn down. So if you don't have a template and you want to follow along and create um, a sun image like I am making today, um, this is where you would begin. I'm just going to quickly switch back over to the template of the sun. Again, I'm going to tack it down just to hold it in place. And I'm going to show you some of the colors that I'm yarn that I'm going to be working with today. So what um, what I'm going to be using is some clear glue, Elmer's glue, but it could be it could be white as well. Um, I have some like this neutral color yarn twine. And then I also have like these vibrant um, blues and greens. I have a yellow, uh, I have a red yarn. It really could be any colors that you like. Uh, it does not have to be realistic. Like if you think of a sun is always yellow and you wanna make your sun bright red today, then please go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna give everyone a minute just to get their piece in place. And then I will show you how to begin the yarn painting. Um, I'm also gonna give people uh, about a five minutes heads up when it's time to pause and stop doing art. Um, and that way at the end, um, I will just check the chat box and see if there's any questions. And um, otherwise, please, um, enjoy this uh, art directive and I'm going to put a little music on. I will talk occasionally, but you'll see once we get started, um, it's, you can follow along and it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy and you might almost feel like it's a meditation because it just kind of goes around in a circle as you're uh, putting the, art, the yarn down. So for my piece, um, I'm gonna start in the middle and I am going to start with, um, with a red color. It's my red yarn. And so the first thing to do is take my glue. And I'm gonna outline this circle in glue. That's the first step. So I'm just gonna take my glue and I'm gonna follow the black outline. And if you just drew this, if you don't have the template, just follow your circle line that you drew. And that's our beginning point. Um, I know you can't see the clear glue on the circle, um, but it but it's there. I'm gonna start by placing, just tacking down the yarn very gently with my finger and going around the entire outside of this circle. Now I haven't cut the yarn yet. Um, I'm just, I will cut it at the end when I reach the meeting point of the two pieces of yarn. And I'm gently tapping it down. Now, as I'm doing that, I'm aware of how it feels on my fingertips. Um, for me, my this yarn isn't as soft. The red is not as soft as my uh, yellow or green or blue yarn. It's a different type of yarn and it's a little coarse. I would say it's like medium coarse. It doesn't, it's not like itchy in feel, 
but um, it's definitely not soft like you would want a scarf or a hat or a blanket. Um, now I haven't gotten any glue on my fingers yet, but I'm sure I will. And when I do, I'm going to notice the difference between the feel of the yarn and the glue. Okay, so now the first strand of yarn is down. Um, and I'm simply going to repeat that pattern, except I'm going to go around the yarn again, just the edge of the circle on the inside of the yarn. And I'm going to put the glue down. And I'm going to work towards my next piece of yarn. And I'm going to keep repeating that glue, then the yarn, then another layer of glue until we get to the very center of the circle. So I'm going to start in the same place again, and I'm gently going to put it down on top of the glue and work myself my way around the circle with the yarn. Now you may find that your um, yarn and glue are moving a little bit as you're doing this. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. So I've, I've cut my uh, second piece of yarn. So do you remember earlier when I said to, if you have a paintbrush and the back tip end of it, or if you have a toothpick, or I have this like little piece of wood, um, and my yarn or my circle shape starts to get a little bit wavy or it moves a little bit, what I could do is I can take the end of my brush and I can just put a little bit of pressure on it and press it down. And you might see some of the glue come through, that's okay. It's holding it in place. And I might go all the way around. And you may not have to do this on every strand of yarn, but um, you'll notice that at the beginning, when you first start it, it does start to move a little bit. It needs to build up and um, have more strands of yarn and get a little thicker. You could also use your the tip of your brush to kind of push it um, like that. Or if you're a person that really likes, doesn't mind the feel of the glue and the yarn together, you can use your finger on one side and the yarn, uh, the tip of the brush on the other and just gently push it together, just like that. Okay, so that's two strands of yarn. I am going to keep repeating it until I get to the middle. I'm gonna put the music up a little bit for you so you can hear some piano music as we create art. Okay, my third circle of glue is complete. You may notice as you go um, in towards the middle of the circle, the yarn is getting shorter. You're using less yarn than you did on the outer piece. It's getting smaller. Um, and it also may get a little more challenging for your fingers to work with because it is getting smaller. The space is getting tighter. So that just means you may have to use your other tools um, like a toothpick or the end of the, the tip of the paintbrush um, to push it together.
Okay. I hope everyone is um, getting the hang of this yarn painting now. And um, if you chose to do your own template, your own design, um, that is awesome. You can do this anytime. Uh, you want to get into a very relaxed state. I find that this yarn painting um, is almost like a meditation. You kind of listen to music and you just repeat the patterns and you forget about anything that's on your mind that feels uh, like you've been thinking about things over and over again. So we just gives you a little space to relax. Again, press it down if it's getting a little out of shape. And use your um, finger or use your paintbrush to move it. Now, I'm not sure about everyone else, but my fingers are starting to get a little sticky from the glue, um, which I, I'm curious if that is fr as frustrating for other people as it can be for me. Um, you'll see the more pieces you put down, you may have to stop and wet your hands or use a paper towel. That's to be expected. I'm going to put down one more strand of red and then I'm going to change the color of the yarn that I'm using and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. I'm going to get my last strand of red down. Did people just see what I did? My goodness, all my strands moved. So, not to worry. I'm just going to use my paintbrush and move things back into place. And this happens when things start to get very sticky. <laughs> This is a good time to um, think about the feelings that come up sometimes when you're using these different materials together. Do you remember at the beginning when I said glue can be very frustrating to work with, but yarn could be very soothing? So two feelings that kind of fight one another. Okay.
I have to redo the last strand. Cut the last piece of red before I demonstrate switching over to a different color. And not only will I be switching over to a different color, um, but the, the next color um, yarn, which is yellow, does have a different feel to it. And I'm gonna be really mindful of that when I um, switch over. And this is um, the texture of this yarn. And I don't know if you can see the difference. This is the texture of this yarn. So this one's a little coarse and rough. And this one is really soft. So think about in the winter time when you put on a really nice cozy hat or scarf, um, you'd wanna use something really soft like this. So I'm really noticing the difference between the two. And when I notice the difference between the two, I notice how I feel. Like this one definitely makes me feel um, more comfortable. I'm gonna put um, my circle of glue. And then I'm just switching over to the next color yarn. With this uh, texture yarn, being softer, it's also kind of fuzzy. There's a lot of little pieces that come that could stick out and it makes it a little bit more uh, challenging to put down on the glue. So I'm really gonna have to use my paintbrush tip or my finger to make sure that it's sticking um, because it will lift up much more uh, easily than the the other uh, red yarn. Okay. Now my first one down. Now, if you find that you're using too much glue and it's getting too messy, um, take a moment grab a piece of paper towel if you have wet paper towel even better and just clean clean off the glue and from your fingertips um, and have like a fresh start with the next color that you're putting down i'm gonna put the next circle down Now, because the circles are getting really small and I'm working towards the middle, I'm not gonna cut this piece. I'm just going to hold it back and put my next circle of glue right next to it and continue my yarn around. Pressing it down gently. And I'm just going to keep repeating that. I'm not going to cut the yarn yet until I get to the center. The reason that I'm not cutting the yarn now is because the pieces are getting smaller and smaller, which makes it really difficult um, to keep them in place.
getting close to the center. And I'm gonna go back to using the paintbrush. Once you get to the very center and you cannot put down any more yarn, you're going to hold your paintbrush down like this and make sure that it's nice and glued and sticky before you cut it. And if you want to make sure that it doesn't pull up, you can hold it down for maybe 10 seconds before you take it away. And then you're just gonna take your scissor and snip off the very last piece. I have a little piece sticking up in the middle. So I'm just gonna put another dot of glue to make sure it goes, uh, it sticks in the center. So I'm gonna lift this to show you. This is the outer rim red and the inner circle, like the fuzzy yellow. And I hope you can see that there's a difference in the texture, that this one is flat and coarse to the touch. And this one is soft and fuzzy, almost like a cotton ball to the touch. And of course the glue is, oozing out a little bit still, but um, it will dry soon. If you're working on the sun, um, like I am, the next thing would be to move out to the rays and the points. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you're doing this on your own and you have a different design, remember take the outline first, whatever the outline is, and work towards the center. Um, it's much easier to work from the outside line to the inside. If you do it the opposite way, um, it gets a little tricky with some of the um, yarn because you're gonna have very tiny pieces at one point. It's not impossible, it just gets a little bit more tricky. So I am going to um, stay with my yellow yarn for now. And I'm going to start going on the outer line of the sun rays with my glue. I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm only gonna go from here halfway um because I don't want to put too much glue on at once or use too big of a piece of yarn so I'm just gently squeezing the glue and going on the line to the to the halfway mark so right right here I stopped so I started up top and I ended here and I'm going to use the yarn to go in and out in like a jagged um, direction of the sun rays. Don't worry if your glue um, oozes out the side, that's, that's fine. It dries um, clear and you won't see it at the end. And you're just gonna go around the lines, follow the, follow the, the line that you drew um, and don't, don't overwork it. Don't think too much if the lines aren't perfect, um, if it feels really hard to control the yarn, um, just do it the best that you can 
And the wonderful thing is that all of these pieces always look so unique. Um, and that's that's the beauty in them. And push it down a little bit with your tool. Another thing that um, I mention often in my workshops is that art, um, the pace or you know how long it takes someone to create art is very different from person to person. So I may work much slower than some other uh, person um, in the group and or someone may work much slower than me and that's absolutely fine if you do not complete your um, art during this workshop. You can always go back to it. I ask people not to rush through their art, to take their time, um, to be mindful of uh, what they're feeling and thinking about. Um, that helps us understand our feelings and emotions that are coming up, um, just pacing ourselves slowly. Now, if you notice with um, going around the sun rays, I'm using my paintbrush quite a bit um, because the sun rays are um, triangle shapes. And they're much pointier, right? They're sharper lines than the circle was. And so I find it a little bit more of a challenge to put down um, the yarn along a very sharp or straight line. The circle or curved lines um, are much easier. I'm almost to the end of where I stopped with the glue. And then I'm going to cut the piece of yarn and I will move over um, and repeat the same thing on the other side of the sun, the rest of the rays. Now, if your glue is drying at all, like if you put down, um, if you're taking a little bit of time to get your yarn on and you feel your glue is starting to dry up, um, just reapply it. And continue where you left off. Okay. All right, I am stopping right here. Cutting my piece of yarn. Now I wanna show you something interesting. Um, I chose to put down the yellow yarn on the left, on my left side of the image. Um, and only do half of it. I'm going to switch it up and put something completely different on the on the right side, on the opposite side. I'm going to choose um, something that looks like it's a twine. And out of the materials I've used so far, the twine is definitely the most coarse. That means it's rough in my, my fingers when I touch it. Um, it's much thinner than the red or the yellow yarn. And it, it really doesn't feel as pleasant. Um, it's not as uh, comforting of a sensory feel as the uh, red or yellow. So I'm noticing that. But I still, I want to use it and I want to try it. Um, 
on the other side. Just putting the glue on. Again, starting from the top, following the lines of the sun rays to the point where I left off uh, with the yellow yarn. Now I could already tell that this is gonna be the most difficult to put down, um, which means I am going to need to use my fingers more. I'm going to need to get more glue on my fingers and it's gonna frustrate me more. And I'm very aware of that. Um, and I'm gonna stick with it for a little bit to see if I can make it work. And if I can't, I can always switch to something else, but I wanna try it. This twine does something that the yarn doesn't do. It curls up on you when it doesn't wanna stick. Um, so I really have to use some pressure and press it down. And I also have to be careful when I lift my finger up that I don't take the whole thing off with me again. Okay. I'm gonna clean my fingers, get some of the glue off. Now I'm watching the time and I'm being mindful of how much time we have left together. So we have approximately 10 more minutes together. Um, and in about five to seven minutes, I'm gonna pause wherever I'm at with my art making so I can come back up and check the chat box and see if anyone had any questions for me. Um, I already know that I'm not gonna complete this piece of art in an hour. It's something that I'm gonna have to go back to and um, work with on, a, on another afternoon when I have a little bit of time. Um, but my finished piece will be um, where I will fill in the entire inside of the rays. And then I'm gonna decide on the outside if I wanna add anything. So since this is a sun, I might wanna add um, like a free form cloud next to it. Uh, people can see this. I'm just drawing a cloud. Um, I might want to add another one over here. And so I can use different color yarn for the clouds later on. I can add blues to the cloud. Um, so the, the possibilities are kind of endless with the yarn. You can fill in the entire thing. And ideas can come to you as you go along and there's no wrong or right. You do it however you feel. Um, as the artist, your picture will look um, the best to you. Okay, I'm gonna continue with this twine. I'm actually gonna cut a little piece to make it shorter so I can manage it a little bit better. Go back to my paintbrush. Thank you. 
I'm almost to the end of this side. Um, and once I get there, I'm gonna pause and I'm going to show you, um, I'm gonna switch over to the blue yarn and just show you for a moment how that would look um, to add a cloud to this. And for this piece, for the inside, um, when I have more time, when I go back to it, I will fill all of this in with yellow, just like we did the circle. And I think I might switch to something besides the, the twine because it was so hard to work with. So I may choose like a green yarn or something on the other side, which will be much easier. Okay. Just take off some of this glue. And before I come up uh, to check the chat box, I just want to show you if, how to do the cloud. So the cloud that I did was very um, free form, which means it's just very loose. Um, and it's kind of an abstract shape. And I'm just going to follow the glue around it. And take my piece of blue yarn. The blue is very similar in softness, um, texture to the yellow, and it's much easier to put down. Um, it's also a shape that's kind of curved and round, um, so it doesn't have to be uh, as accurate as some of these points around, around the sun rays. That makes it easier as well. So I'm going to cut it. Now that's my outline for my cloud. Um, I also put one down on this side. So I think I, before, before we end, I'm just gonna show you what that would look like too. So you have an idea, and then I'm just gonna fill in the center of the cloud. I might add some white yarn, uh, As you could see with this one, I used my fingers a lot. I'm gonna put my last dot of blue, and then I'm gonna come up and see how everyone's doing and check the chat. Hands a bit. I'm pretty satisfied with how much I accomplished um, in this session as far as getting the yarn in and on the board, um, especially since it was a bit sticky. Um, and I'm going to hold the board up so you can see it. Take this off, take the tape off for you. So, 
looks a bit like this. And I will continue to fill it in. I just want to check the chat. I see that um, Frankie put the templates in and um, which is great. You can go back since there's several of them. Um, you can uh, do different variety ones. You can create your own. And if you felt like you didn't have um, enough colors of yarn today, um, maybe you can start just collecting little um, samples of yarn. They could just be scraps of yarn and just keep them um, in like a little shoot box or something. And you just keep adding to it. Um, and then when you sit down to do this project on your own at some point, you'll have a whole rainbow of colors of yarn. And um, you can create anything you'd like, anything abstract or, or use a template and um, have fun with it. It was really a pleasure to um, be with everyone today. And I really look forward to working with you again. If you have any further questions, please um, ask Erin or Frankie or Bianca and um, they will let me know. Otherwise I will hopefully see you all again soon. Thank you, Kim, so much. That was awesome. Thanks, Erin. And if anybody was creating along with Kim, feel free to send us photos. We love posting those photos online. I'm also going to paste the link in our chat so you can sign up for our uh, other upcoming webinars. Thank you all so much. And thanks again, Kim. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.